everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. For Time of Legends Joan of Arc this week, all of the base books will be completely finished within the week. The Teutonic Knights expansion has begun the layout process, including cards and all the scenarios themselves. There are about 20 new unit cards to make, as well as additional scenario cards and intrigue cards on top of that. And these are all included in the layout of their respective scenarios. For the solo scenarios, the one we made in the Paris office is done in both French and English. And the ones developed by Vesuvius are done in English, since that's the language in which they were developed. Please don't forget that the Pledge Manager for Joan of Arc 1.5 has been reopened and will remain open until the end of the year, and you'll find the link to the Game Found page in the description below. For Solomon Kane, we were informed a week ago that the MPC sample core of boxes A and B wouldn't be ready to be shipped until this week, and then shortly after that, the Rite of Doom sample will also be ready for shipment. Well, the sample has, yet, has not yet arrived in the Paris office, but as soon as it does, we will be, of course, chomping at the bit to show you everything. Now, as we've said in the recent past, production of the core boxes has been completed for Solomon Kane. The last few details of production are now being put together for the Right Hand of Doom expansion, uh, which was included in the Early Bird Puritan Pledge and should be completed by the end of November. For Super Fantasy Brawl this week, we received a few inquiries about the Feldher bag. Um, so we also wanted to address it here to the broader audience. Now, Feldher will be sending the bag directly to the backers themselves, so it won't be following the exact same chain of distribution that the rest of the fulfillment underwent. The last update we heard from Feldher was that they would be shipping them out 110 days from the end of September. When we are given more precise information, rest assured we will pass it along to you. Now, on that note, since fulfillment is generally complete, this will be the last regular update of Super Fantasy Brawl. From now on, we will only make updates when we have more significant announcements to make. Now, if you want to be part of a rather vibrant community for Super Fantasy Brawl, you can find its sub-channel on the Mythic Games Discord server. We will be running some online tournaments on a regular basis, and that's where they'll be announced first. So we'll see you there. For Enchanters this week, we've been given more shipping information by the factory. While we weren't given the vessel names, we do have the estimated dates of uh, departure and delivery to the hubs. For North America, the estimated date of departure is November 4th, and delivery to our hub in Jacksonville, Florida, is estimated to be December 9th. For the European and rest of the world regions, the estimated date of departure is November 9th, with delivery to our hub in Rotterdam on December 9th. For the Oceania region, the estimated date of departure is November 8th, with delivery to our hub in Adelaide on December 2nd. Now, of course, when we have confirmation of the boat's departures, we will definitely be letting you know. For Steam Watchers this week, we've laid out a ton of things recently, especially considering the expansions. There were a few things that were changed for better user experiences. The strength counters for the leaders in the Fuel for War expansion have always been troublesome, but now we found a solution that's quite efficient. The same goes for the kits from the Spark of Hope expansion. Now they fit snugly into your caravan dashboard, which is super satisfying. And here's a kit in all of its glory. The magenta outline is where the kit will be cut by the machines in production. So basically, in short, we're wrapping up layout for several different elements of the game. Also, miniature molds are currently being produced. Now, on that note, we wanted to also mention that we decided not to change Palace, the Catabatian leader's helmet. Painters will simply need to choose between glazing or smoking the glass part of the helmet if they don't feel like trying to paint the face in transparency. 
Of course, we'll update you with more news of production as soon as we can. For Hell the Last Saga this week, unfortunately France is once again in lockdown from the beginning of this week, which forces us in Paris to change our work process and import all our game elements on Tabletop Simulator to be able to continue our tests and balancing at home. Part of the team is working on updating the rules, which have undergone significant improvements since the Kickstarter campaign. As soon as the layout is finished, you'll be invited to read it and give us your feedback. While waiting to publish this new version of the rules, here's the new player aid that we've come up with in answer to your calls for one. Feel free to print it out for your reference during your prologue test games on Tabletop Simulator, as you will also find a link to it in the description below. Now, the most attentive among you will notice that it already contains indications on certain changes made by our team as a result of playtesting, such as the presence of factors following certain skills. For example, the skill combat becomes combat X, where X is the number of additional dice you will add to your attack roll. This approach allows us to more finely manage the hero's rise in power over the entire campaign. The increase will be carried out by adding or replacing cardboard parts on the double-layered hero dashboards. For the prologue, please consider that in the absence of these factors, X is equal to 1 by default. And for Darkest Dungeon, the board game today, we are now over $3.5 million with more than 21,000 backers and climbing. So thank you all so much for your support. Other things of note for the campaign is that we have added a free expansion called the Butcher's Circus, which brings a new game mode that can be played as one-offs instead of the campaign. Now you can construct your team of four heroes and battle against your opponent's team in the Butcher's Circus. We also added the fifth and final expansion for the game, The Color of Madness, which joins the Crimson Court, the Cove, the Warrens, and the Weald. And with that final expansion revealed, we wanted to announce that we are now offering an all-in pledge for Darkest Dungeon, the Ancestral Pledge. The Ancestral Pledge includes the core box and all five expansions, including all the related unlock stretch goals for each, and the promotional Musketeer miniature, all for $330. If pledged for separately, this amount of content would cost $370 altogether. Now, there's only a couple more days left in the campaign, folks. Again, we want to thank you so much for all of your support, but let's finish this strong. Now, remember that Leo will be live later today at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions and to check out what new and wondrous thing he may have to spoil for the darkest dungeon but that's it for this week stay home stay safe play some games while you're at it and we'll see you on the flip side take care